So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we'll cover the top 10 best cheap cameras. Do know you can find timestamps and links in the description down below, as well as the pinned comment. And also know this is not a sponsored video. Let's get started. The fact is most new cameras are expensive and mostly out of the reach for first timers and budget conscious photographers. But when starting, affordability is key and getting a camera at a bargain and a good value is the number one recommendation around. Thankfully, you don't have to spend a fortune to get a powerful and capable camera. And with all the evolution in technology over recent years, even the once flagships of five years ago remain more than capable of delivering stunning images. So if you're willing to sidestep certain features, you can get such a camera at quite a bargain. But there are a lot of budget-friendly cameras and many options fitting the suit. There are also several paths you can take when deciding which camera is best, and you can either purchase a newer entry-level model or a once flagship now replaced by more advanced models. Each has its pros and cons, but either way, finding the right camera will require some research. To help in that quest, we've created a short guide with several tips when looking for a cheap camera, and you can find that in the link down below. And we've also compiled a list of the top 10 best cheap cameras on the present market. Coming at number 10, GoPro's Hero 8 Black. GoPro's Hero 8 brings fresh design and more flexibility. It captures 12 megapixel images in 4K 60fps and 1080p 240fps video. It also has live streaming support, live burst, stabilization, time lapse, HDR, and wireless connectivity. With the Hero 8, GoPros streamlined the design to make it more pocketable, flexible, and durable, and it now offers built-in mounting fingers for hassle-free mounting. This model also was the first to come with expandable mods to enhance its functionality with microphones, displays, and lights, but the device remains just as robust as earlier models with 10 meters of water ceiling. Overall, GoPro's Hero 8 rethinks the line's traditions and adds extraordinary capabilities. Despite its age, it's a strong alternative to the pricier Hero 9 and a solid option for adventure photographers. Coming at number 9, Canon's G7X2. Canon's G7X Mark II improves the technical performance of the line. It features a 20.1 megapixel 1 inch sensor and 1080p video up to 60 frames per second. It also has a 3 inch tilting touchscreen, stabilization, a built in neutral density filter, wireless connectivity a 2x teleconverter, HDR, and a 24 to 100mm equivalent lens. The G7X2 uses a 31-point autofocusing system with face detection that's generally good and dependable across most situations. But with this model, Canon refined the design, improved the grip, and added a smooth toggle to the front control ring. A subtle addition, but one that provides quick adjustments and tactile feedback for controlling the camera's aperture. With its 4.2 times zoom, the camera also provides a longer than average reach for its class, but crucially, this camera is supremely easy to use, and it offers an excellent touchscreen interface, perfect for beginners, yet doesn't skimp on functionality and manual controls for enthusiasts. Overall, Canon's G7X2 delivers a lot of performance for the price, and it's a strong travel-oriented camera for on-the-go photographers. Coming at number 8, Panasonic's FC300. Panasonic's FC300 builds upon the successes of its predecessor. It features a 12.1 megapixel 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, 4K 30fps, and 1080p video up to 60fps. It also has a 3 inch tilting touchscreen, hybrid stabilization, 4K photo, a microphone input, wireless connectivity, and a 24 to 600mm equivalent lens. With this model, Panasonic improved the camera's design by adding a tilting display and it obtains the new Lightspeed AF with DFD technology, doubling the autofocusing performance, but it maintains its predecessor's enormous 24 times optical zoom lens with an impressively bright f2.8 constant aperture, dramatically improving its low light performance. Yet you can now also step things up to 48 times using the intelligent zoom, doubling the lens's reach. As a bridge camera, however, the FC300 offers DSLR styling and comfortable ergonomics, but this new model provides full weather ceiling, making a solid contender for capturing risky sports or wildlife. Overall, Panasonic's FC300 shines as a versatile multimedia camera and a solid all-rounder. It doesn't blow away rivals with resolving power, but it makes up for that with excellent zoom in a well-handling package. Coming at number 7, Canon's Rebel T7. 
Canon's T7 continues their popular Rebel series of affordable entry-level DSLRs. It features a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, 1080p 30 frames per second video, and Wi-Fi and NFC connectivity. The T7 uses a 9-point autofocusing system with a central cross-type point, dramatically simplifying selecting the appropriate AF point. And despite this camera's simplicity, this focusing system is precise and works incredibly well. Sure, the T7 is a fairly simple camera and only an incremental update over the T6. Even so, it's budget-friendly and easy to use, making it ideal for first-timers and it offers the core necessities to capture high-quality images. Coming at number 6, Panasonic ZS100, also known as the TZ100. Panasonic's ZS100 is powerful, compact, and brings a big zoom to the travel segment. It features a 20.1 megapixel 1-inch sensor, 4K 30fps, and 1080p video up to 60fps. It also has a 3-inch touchscreen, hybrid stabilization, exposure bracketing, wireless connectivity, and a 25-250mm to 250 millimeter equivalent lens. The ZS100 obtains a 49-point light-speed autofocusing system with DFD technology and face and eye tracking. And it also obtains Panasonic's helpful 4K photo modes, letting you extract 8.3 megapixel images from a 4K video. But crucially with this model, Panasonic's opted for a much larger 1-inch sensor instead of the typical 1 over 2.3-inch sensors found in these models. And this configuration matches the higher-end FC1000, but it dramatically improves the image quality the camera delivers. And additionally, this camera now offers 50 frames per second burst shooting using electronic shutter and a manual design catered towards experienced photographers wanting utmost control. Overall, Panasonic's ZS100 is quite an accomplishment. It shines as a travel camera that performs admirably across a wide variety of situations, but one that sits mostly alone with its versatile 10x zoom lens and larger 1-inch sensor. Coming at number 5, Panasonic's GX85. Panasonic's GX85 is a powerful rangefinder style mirrorless camera. It features a 16 megapixel micro four thirds size sensor, 4K 30 FPS, and 1080p video up to 60 FPS. It also has a 3 inch tilting touchscreen, image stabilization, multiple exposures, panorama, time lapse, focus bracketing, USB charging, and wireless connectivity. The GX85 uses the flagship 49 point autofocusing system from the GH4 with DFD technology for extraordinary point to point performance. But this release also brings face and eye detection to the lineup, improving the camera's accuracy when capturing portraits. It also obtains the new L monochrome profile for punchy and realistic black and white images. Plus, it receives Panasonic's full suite of 4K modes, which capture 8 megapixel stills from a 4K 30fps video. And it now also combines a series of images in camera, so you can change the focus afterwards, or you can shoot 40 frames per second using the electronic shutter. So either way, capturing a fleeting moment is an afterthought here. Overall, Panasonic's GX85 is a competent all-rounder that delivers an incredibly diverse feature set that goes above most rivals. Coming at number 4, Olympus's EM10 Mark III. Olympus's EM10 Mark III is the baby of the OMD family, but a powerful option that offers similar functions to the more professional models of the line. It features a 16 megapixel micro four thirds size sensor, 4K 30fps, and 1080p video up to 60fps. It also has a 3 inch tilting touchscreen, image stabilization, panorama, HDR, a 2x teleconverter, and wireless connectivity. The EM10 features a 121 point autofocusing system a substantial improvement over its predecessor, and it also boasts facial priority and face AF, improving the camera's accuracy to capture sharp portraits. But crucially, it offers sensor-based stabilization rated for four stops, and with a steady hand, you can capture sharp images at one-second shutter speeds. Plus, it also debuts the advanced photo mode, which offers several advanced shooting functions from live composite, focus bracketing, and multiple exposures. Overall, Olympus's EM10 Mark III provides exceptional value within the Micro Four Thirds realm, and it blends powerful imaging performance into a small and uniquely attractive package. Coming in number three, Sony's A6000. Sony's A6000 was the hallmark release to kickstart the entire A6000 lineup. It features a 24.3 megapixel APS-C size sensor and 1080p video up to 60 frames per second. It also has a three inch tilting LCD, two times clear image zoom, USB charging, and wireless connectivity. The A6000 uses Sony's 179-point hybrid autofocusing system with subject tracking, and at the time of release, it was the world's fastest performing system and a revolution amongst mirrorless cameras. 
Its updated processor also helps deliver impressive continuous shooting speeds of 11 frames per second with autofocus tracking, making it a capable option for capturing sports. Overall, Sony's A6000 offers enough technical ability to meet the needs of beginning photographers quickly, and despite its age, it remains a popular option for such purposes. Coming at number two, Canon's EOS M50. Canon's M50 is Canon's most powerful mid-range mirrorless camera. It features a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, 4K 24 FPS, and 1080p video up to 60 FPS. It also has a three inch fully articulating touchscreen, digital stabilization, time lapse, a microphone input, and wireless connectivity. The M50 uses a 99 point autofocusing system with Canon's legendary dual pixel AF, providing a similar performance as the acclaimed 80D, and it also offers eye detection, significantly improving the camera's accuracy when shooting portraits. Plus, it debuts the high-speed movie mode, so you can also record super slow-motion videos at 120 frames per second in full HD. Overall, Canon's M50 is the smaller and more affordable 80D, and it was among the most capable options in Canon's EOS M lineup. As such, it represents a budget-friendly way to get the features from Canon's higher-end professional cameras at a fraction of their price. Coming at number one, Nikon's D3500. Nikon's D3500 is the latest release in the popular entry-level D3000 series. It features a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, 1080p video up to 60 frames per second, and Bluetooth connectivity. The D3500 obtains an 11-point autofocusing system with 3D and dynamic tracking from Nikon's higher-end professional DSLRs. And this combination improves the camera's responsiveness and precision when tracking moving subjects. But crucially, this is one of the small selection of entry-level DSLRs to drop the anti-aliasing filter surrounding the sensor. Doing so, Nikon's dramatically improved the camera's fine resolving power and overall image quality, which matches the flagship D500. And with a class-leading battery life of 1,550 shots per charge, you'll have little difficulty capturing many great images. Overall, Nikon's D3500 provides outstanding image quality and power for an entry-level camera. And while it's simple, it offers beginners a powerful option that remains appropriately affordable. So there you have it, my friends. There is our list of the top 10 best cheap cameras. For more information on this list or to read the detailed guide, look at the pinned comment in the description down below, and that will take you right to the full post. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, photography. <laughs>